Post-Brexit trade talks between the UK and the European Union are continuing via video conference this week. Time, though, is running out to reach a deal. If an agreement isn't made within the week, it may not give enough time for ratification by member states before the 1st of January deadline. The talks were shifted online last week when an EU official tested positive for COVID-19. Both sides indicate that further in-person meetings are needed to resolve any outstanding issues. Well, let's go to Brussels to get the very latest from our correspondent, Shona Murray. Shona, really good to talk to you. Just explain to us, where are we? It's such a critical time frame now. Where are we with both sides on the status of Brexit talks? Oh, you're right, Rosie. It is a critical time. In fact, if we've gone into extra time or borrowed time, really, the deal should have been secured by now for it to have it negotiated, translated into member states' languages, um, debated in parliaments, ratified in parliaments, and also ratified by the European Parliament in time for it to be in place by January 1st. In fact, it's probably highly unlikely that that's, not, that's going to be the case. They'll have to come up with some sort of bridging arrangement where you could have the deal secured but not ratified and in place, or something else, depending on how long it takes to get this deal in place. The priority from the EU and the UK side is, of course, to secure the deal rather than to ensure that they're working to some deadline around ratification. Now, I caught up with uh, Irish Prime Minister Micheál Martin yesterday and asked him really where we stood at this moment on the key outstanding issues, level playing field, fisheries and governance. Fisheries, the sides were very far apart. And it seems to me that a move has to be made to try and deal with the issue uh, over the coming week. On level playing field, um, I think we do all realise the, the fears um, on both sides in terms of one getting an advantage over the other in relation to the application of state aids um, and so forth. Um, but I do believe there is a landing zone on, on the level playing field. That then leads into a dispute resolution mechanism um, that would enable both sides to react if, if one was uh, undermining the agreement and, 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 and in breach of the, the uh, agreement. Uh, I think underlying all this is the necessity for trust and to rebuild trust between the European Union and the United Kingdom. The Taoiseach of Ireland, Michal Martin, there speaking to me yesterday on Euronews, making the point that the outstanding issues are not insurmountable, that they're much more political than they are technical. And key to getting that deal across the line is trust. And trust really is in short supply between the both sides, in particular because of the uh, publication of the Internal Markets Bill by the UK, which would breach the EU-UK withdrawal agreement. So a bit of time to go, Rosie, but both sides really know that they have to make a deal because the cost of failure is very high. Let's just talk briefly about Scotland, if we can, uh, Shana. We have to remember that the majority of the population didn't vote for Brexit. And now what's happened is Boris Johnson's team are suggesting that Scotland are hindering the Brexit process, potentially. What's going on? Yeah, a very interesting letter sent by Michael Gove, uh, Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, Chief Sir Brexit um, contact. Uh, sent a letter to Michael Russell, who's the Cabinet Secretary for Nicola Sturgeon, who's the First Minister of Scotland. Now, we know Nicola Sturgeon is very anti-Brexit, and she's been in touch with Michelle Barnier and the EU task force for some time. The letter stated from Michael Gove was that uh, Nicola Sturgeon's contact with the EU task force was detrimental to the overall negotiation from the UK with the EU, in particular because of her comments around sensitive, offensive issues on fisheries. And it's kind of like a forewarning that, you know, if they don't get a good deal, in particular on fisheries, they can blame it all on Nicola Sturgeon. That's, exa that's what it appears to be anyway. But we'll see. Maybe it's a harbinger that the UK is about to back down uh, on their very fundamentalist position on fisheries. We'll see. Rosie? Shona, thank you very much. Our correspondent there in Brussels.